Today we continue with the, the nine stages of meditation or the nine stages of mental development uh, and um, see if we can finish the summary today. You've got the summary in front of you. So there are nine stages in meditation. The first stage is mental placement. Uh, that is, after you have followed the personal instructions that you have heard, then you correctly apply the method for focusing on the object of attention. So everybody should have an object of attention in meditation. Uh, what is that object of attention? The object of attention is the breath, our breath in and the breath out. And how do you focus on that object? You can imagine yourself as a small little molecule sitting inside your nostril and you are feeling the air in, the cold air, when you breathe in, is in, and when it breathes out, is out. So that's your object of attention. And you must have that object of attention. If you don't have that object of attention, then you have other objects of attention. What are, the, what are other objects of attention? Many. Multiplicity. The lanterns, the column, the floor, the people, the sound, the frequency, all kinds of objects of attention. You don't want those. Those are the objects of, of, of attention of the temporal world that entice your senses. And now we only use one object of attention, no other objects. You don't have any other objects, and, and also your thinking is not pulled away by the, object of, by the object of attention. Because when, you're, when you focus on the object of attention um, in the outside world, or where your senses correspond to all objects, at the same time you have mental functions arising in you. What are those mental functions? Greediness, hatred, jealousy, shame, remorsefulness, um, you name them. Many, many mental functions arise. Uh, hatred, violence, negligence, fraudulence, envy, uh, you, you name them. But now you're in this in this meditation hall, your, man, your object of attention is only one. You place your mind on that object of attention. That is the first procedure. If you don't even follow this first procedure, you're not doing anything. You just sit there with no object of attention. Or maybe you have object of attention inside of you. You're sitting in there doing nothing. You're thinking of your home. You're thinking of your job. You're thinking of what you're going to do on Monday. And what did you do uh, yesterday? And all these are the ob object of attention. We don't need those. We only need one object of attention. And that object of attention Lee already mentioned is right here at the nostril. Or many other objects of attention. It could be the, the belly button the three inches down, where the, we call it the ocean of breath, the chakra. You can concentrate on that chakra, uh, three fingers below the, the belly button, um, or on a flame, on a candle flame. If you have a candle flame, or on, a, on, on, on water, you, create, you have your comfortable and object of attention that you are used to. Your object of attention could be the name of a Buddha, Amitabha Buddha. That's my object of attention. But you've got to have an object of attention. Why do we have that? Because otherwise we will have multiplicity, uncountable object of attentions. Then how can we practice mind control? How can we practice the, the meditation? We cannot. So you use one single object of attention and then we place our mind on it. That's mental placement. Is it that simple? It's that simple. But it's not simple. It's not simple. And so instead, instead of being distracted by many, many uncountable objects of attention, you only have one object of attention. 
That is called mental placement. And of course, you've got to mind the three adjustments when you're meditating. The three A's of meditation, you adjust your outside up to the inside. The three A's, you remember the three A's, the three adjustments? Adjustment to the body. The first adjustment is how do you sit, how do you cross the leg. And if you don't know how to cross the leg, you just put both legs on the floor. And you've got to have comfortable attire. You cannot wear tight jeans. You cannot have tight bows. You cannot wear perfume and cologne. Or um, your clothes should not be, um, to be um, mixed with uh, a fabric softener because then it would be too smelly. Your, 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 your next door neighbor wouldn't be able to meditate. So make sure you don't wear pungent sh shampoo. Um, otherwise, you may be asked to, to leave because you're affecting the whole group. Make sure. So that's adjustments. Before mental placement, you've got to have all these three, three A's. Adjustment to the environment, to the body, Socks, of course, and if you are, if, if you, uh, if it's in the winter time, maybe you need a blanket to cover your knee, kneecaps. You got to have a cushion underneath it. You cannot be sitting just next to the opening of an air conditioner. Uh, the, the the cold breeze will be shooting at you. You cannot meditate. You you cannot meditate in front of a TV. You cannot meditate just next to a telephone. Um, you cannot meditate with your cell phone turned on inside your pocket. There's so many things you've got to watch out. That's the first adjustment, adjustment to posture. Adjustment to breath, of course. You've got to breathe naturally. And then adjustment to mind, which means that you have to... What is adjustment to mind? Right now, we should get more details. What is adjustment to mind? These are the five... The nine, men, the nine mental stages of development, that's adjustment to mind. So when we say adjustment to mind, we just simplify it by telling you the mind should be putting on the object of attention. But now we're telling you in more detail. Adjustment to posture, you already know. Adjustment to breath, we already have told you the object of attention is on your breath. And right now, adjustment to mind, what is that? We didn't tell you in detail. But this is now, here. Right here, now, this moment, I'm telling you, the first stage is mental placement. Place your mind on that object of attention that you already have created for yourself. And then is continuous placement. After you place your mind on that object of attention, you got to do it continuously. You cannot do it with distraction. The first few seconds, okay, I'm concentrating on my breath. And then after maybe half a second, no, 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 I'm thinking of my home, I'm thinking of my car, I'm thinking of my job, I'm thinking of past experiences, I'm, 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 I'm flashing to my past memory, I'm projecting for the future, I, I thought about many, many other things, but not on my object of attention. Then you're being distracted, then you're not continuous. Then, strictly speaking, you fail. You fail your test. And some people fail in the first minute. Other people fail maybe after five minutes. And some people fail maybe after two seconds. Did you fail or did you pass? If you pass, for how long? For five minutes? Ten minutes? If you continuously can keep your object of attention for half an hour, oh, that's powerful. Because that is called mind concentration. Just put this religious, religious connotation apart. If you talk to a teacher of positive thinkers, and you said, teacher, my positive thinker teacher, I can concentrate for half an hour. They will be surprised. If Sonny can concentrate for half an hour on his reading, he'll be an A student all the time. Grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four, up to universities. If you can always 
keep a continuation of half an hour concentration, take a break, another half hour concentration, take a break. You only need to study three hours per day and you become the master of what you are studying. I'm not talking about religion. Throw that word religion away and talking about daily life. So what, what, what am I doing? What, what are we doing in here? We're talking about coming into a religious Buddhist temple and we're talking about something that is not religious. The, the word religion is a fictitious name. For the sake of telling you about a Buddhist teaching, we use that word Buddha. You can call it some, something else if you want. So, Continuous placement, that means you place your mental, you place your, your, your concentrate on your object of attention continuously. But then who can do it continuously? I cannot do it continuously myself. If I'm, even if I can, how, how long? Well, if you can continuously do it for one hour, oh, you are an expert. If you continuously do it for one hour and then you continuously do it for two hours and for three hours, oh, it's almost like maybe one in, in a million people that you can do it in, in, in three hours continuously. Probably the story, I, the true story I told you about the uncle of that taxi cab driver, he could do it continuously for three, four hours. Maybe he could do it continuously for one month. Did I tell you that true story? That taxi cab driver, when I was in Kuala Lumpur and I was going to the airport and he said, oh, after talking for a long time and very boring, you know, you, you see how conversation between taxi driver and, and the backseat drivers and uh, everything about scenery, about airport, about all these. But suddenly he said, my uncle, he practiced in Bhutan for 15 years as, 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 a, as a yoga teacher. And uh, last month, um, he bid us farewell in the ceremony and then he went into a cave that he already prepared. And we witnessed the, the cave door closed, a big boulder, he can't push it open. Inside the cave there's nothing. No kitchen, no pantry, no food, no water. And then he said, I'll be meditating in here for seven years. Um, after seven years, you open the cave door. If I die, just let me die. If I'm still alive, I'll come back with a message. He's still there. He's still in the cave. Imagine someone who, who all of us value life so, so dearly. And um, to him, he can master his own life. He could stay in there, no food, no drink, for seven years. Um, there was a Buddhist Atua, I forgot his name. Is it Mantris for the Buddhist Atua? He, um, he was with the Buddha at the time of the Buddha Sakyamuni, 2,600 years, years ago. And he went into the cave. He said he would come out when the next Buddha comes out. The laughing Buddha with the big belly. When you enter the temple, you see the big belly Buddha, Buddha of happiness. He will be the future Buddha coming after Sakyamuni Buddha, historical Buddha of human civilization. When he would come, we don't know. But this Buddhisattva said he will come out from the cave to join the next future Buddha. He's still in the cave. So, did we talk about mental placement. You place your mind on an object of attention. We talk about continuous placement because 
we need to be continuously doing it, but who can continuously do it? So the third would be patched placement. That means, okay, I concentrate on my object of attention here. I got distracted. It's not continuous. So I got to correct it. The monkey's gone away. My monkeying mind, although it's on the leash, because I used that leash, which is that object of attention, to leash the monkey. Now the monkey's gone away, but I still have got that leash in my hand. I pull it back. I pull the monkey back. Okay, monkey honey, sit, sit still. Sit still. So pull the monkey back. The monkey sits still. Okay, I patched it. I correct it. So that's the monkey mind being corrected by pulling the leash back and ask the monkey to stay put. So that's patch placement or correcting placement. That's the third. You have to do a lot of correcting placement because you have a lot of a, a distraction. You need to correct it all the time. So don't get bored. Don't say after, after coming to the temple for one month, four sessions of meditation, and you ask yourself, so where am I going? Is it what do I have to learn? This is easy. Where am I going from here? You're not going anywhere. No place to go. You go within. You go inside here. You don't have to ask. Oh, Reverend, where am I going from here? Every time I, you told me the same thing, every time Lee is saying the same thing, three adjustments, three A, where am I going? What's next? If you always want to know where you're going, you better go to UBC. UBC with step number one, take this introduction, 100, and then 101, 102, 103. This is not what it is. That's enough for your whole life. You find yourself, you find yourself, yourself. You find your entity, your reality, yourself, not the teacher. So, you got a mental placement, number one. Number two is continuous placement. Number three, you leash that monkey back. That is correcting placement or patch placement. And then you go to number four. What is number four? Number four is, of course, the monkey goes away again and they le you leash it back. But all these other previous procedures, the monkey has gone a mile away before you know how to push it back, pull it back. You're meditating, you lost your thought on the object of attention, and you don't know about it, or you already have slept. You think you're in meditation. Some people meditate and he's sleeping all the time, and you thought he's in trance. I'm in a trance. Oh, when I wake up, then I, 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 I wake up from a trance. No, you wake up from your sleep. So, because that monkey has gone to sleep, it's gone away to sleep. How far? It's gone home, two miles from here, West Vancouver, Coquitlam. It's gone home on a sleeping bed. So far away, the monkey has gone so far away. But as you practice more and more, the monkey is not too far about right at the temple's door, you could put it back. Right at the parking lot, you pull back the monkey. The monkey's not too, f he's close. That's why we call close placement. In other words, your, your concentration, you concentrate and then maybe, then you lose your concentration. But you discover it immediately because it's just so, so close to you. Your awakening mind, your awakening ability is so close to you, then you can, the monkey is not too far out and you can you release it back. That's called play, close placement. What are we talking about now? We're talking about 
adjustment to the mind, the third step that Lee has been talking about, adjustment to the mind, this is all it is. But we cannot go through so much detail in the introduction. I'm telling you right now. Nobody can go give you so detail at, right at the start, then we don't have time to practice. Now, this is adjustment to the mind. And then we go to stage number five. Number one is mental placement, number two is continuous placement, number three is correcting placement or patch placement, number four is close placement. Number five is taming. Taming is the monkey mind is under your taming control already. And some people, you know how he treat the monkey? He treat his own mind? He said, I'm going to concentrate on this object of attention. That's my breath. I'm not going to let it go away. I must. I must try. Come on, come on. I must object of attention. When the monkey came away, he pulled it. Because he's so tight. He's so tight with taming. He's so tight with what he's achieving. He's so eager that he pulled so hard on the monkey mind that the monkey is dead. He applies too much force on the monkey. After all, he's just a monkey baby. Why do you mistreat the monkey? You cannot tame it so that he's dead. So you must be gently controlling it, letting it go, controlling it, so you concentrate on your breath and it's gone. Don't get angry about it. How come I'm so stupid? How come I couldn't do it? Don't, don't blame yourself on it. Just slowly and gently and with durability, with endurances, do it day after day and after day after day. It would come. Don't force it. When you're growing corn, you put your shoot down, and then, no, I want to grow faster. I want to pull it out a little bit, one inch per day, so that it grows faster. You think the corn will come? You pull the suit. You pull the wheat. You let it grow. Taming. The taming process is natural. The taming process is not by forceful means. That's what we call taming. And then when you are distracted by by subtle, very subtle forgetfulness. In other words, the taming becomes so subtle and subtle and so refined that you really need inner strength for the taming. And as you do all these, the sixth stage of develop, mental development will come, that is pacification. So, pacification, that means you have occasional distraction. The distraction is not too often now. Occasional distraction. You come to a pacification, uh, at a point of pacification, which means that when you are distracted by even subtle forgetfulness, um, recognize this immediately and stop it short. And, upon, and, upon, and on eliminating it, generate the power of effort to, uh, to lengthen the flow of attention that is uninterrupted by hindrances. No more hindrances. You come to no more hindrances, you come to pacification. What are hindrances? What are the hindrances in meditation? Do you still remember the hindrances of meditation? The five hindrances of meditation? When you are doing meditation, there so, are so many hindrances to you. The first is sensuality. Um, your feelings, emotional feelings, your feelings on the past, um, uh, the, your feelings on impurity, on impermanence, your feelings about suffering and emptiness, um, all this sensuality feeling. You also have hindrances of anger, uh, the hatred in you, or uh, the unbalance, 
feeling between hatred and love, and also sloth and torpor. Sloth is laziness, because we all tend to be lazy in meditation. We don't want to work that hard, and of course, you cannot just like uh, my example. I'm pulling the monkey so hard. You have to to do it consistently um, without agitation and worry. So agitation and worry is an, another hindrance. Doubt is another hindrance. So these are the five hindrances that you should watch out for. So when you are in pacification, that is number number six in your mental development. So as you develop this, you have less and less distraction. Then you you come to a point that is no more distraction. The monkey won't go away. The monkey simply sit there. It won't go away, and that is complete pacification. The monkey is sitting there with complete pacification. It doesn't go away, but the monkey is still moving and you know a little bit agitation while sitting in there. So you continue further. The no distraction even go finer and finer with subtlety. You come to one point, one pointed attention. That means even the monkey, because if the monkey is sitting there. Maybe he's moving and he's scratching, you know, all these doing all these gestures. But at the one point of attention, the monkey simply sits still. He's a quiet baby, with no distraction, sitting still. Not even peeling the peanuts.、Uh, the monkey needs something to eat. To eat. Have you observed how, what the, the monkey's behavior? I observe monkey behavior. He can't sit still. If he has nothing else, no peanuts around, he will just pick up a, a grain of soil and and mumped on it. He can't sit still, but at one pointed attention, the monkey is going to to be a meditator now. That monkey baby is a meditator, like you. He's sitting in there doing nothing. He's he's sitting with complete. One pointedness of mind, complete pacifications, and is still. At that stage, it, at this stage, the monk, the the meditator can can sit for five or six hours without distraction. He is on his way to get to samadhi. And then the final would be balance placement. A complete balance placement, placement of mind. Where there is no duality, there's no thinking of good and bad,、um, beauty and ugly,、uh, beauty and, and ugliness, rich and poor. There's no duality of thinking. It's just one concentration with a balanced thinking, balanced placement.、Um, in the eighth stage, you still need to apply efforts. In other words. Mental placement number one. You need to apply efforts to it. You need to work hard at it. A lot of distractions. Continuous placement. You need to. There's number two. You need to apply efforts. You need to. And there's also a lot of distractions, but not as many distractions as the first one. The third is correcting placement or patch placement. You still need. You still have a lot of distractions. You still need to apply efforts, and then close placement. Of course, efforts. But less and less distraction, taming. You still have to apply efforts to it, with less distractions. Pacification. You don't need that much efforts, but you still need to apply a little bit, and the distraction is getting less and less. Complete pacification. You still need efforts, but you don't need as much efforts as before. One pointedness of mind, one pointedness attention. You still need efforts, but very little. Distraction, almost none. When you're at balance placement, it's spontaneous. You don't need efforts. No more distraction. In other words, you don't need to say, "I need to tame my mind." At the final nine stage, you don't need any efforts. You immediately, in meditation, at that point, you already have achieved samadhi. The highest level in 
karma that too. And when you are in that meditation, power would come. Talking about supernatural power, that's where you get supernatural power. But your, our objective is not to get supernatural power, but that supernatural power is within you. You may be able maybe to, uh, to predict the future. You may, some people may be able to reflect on past life too. You know your past life. The power is there. And as you continue more and more and more, you go to the first dhyana level. When you're at the fourth dhyana level, the Buddha was at the fourth dhyana level and then he achieved the Niroda Samadhi to become the Buddha. That is the mind's finer and finer development. So in, if we can, in meditation, there are six powers at the same time when you're practicing mental development. We call it the power of hearing. Power of hearing is you hear it, you listen to instructions. That is the mental placement, uh, number one mental placement stage. And that is the power of reflection, which is in the continuous placement. And then the power of mindfulness is in close placement. The power of vigilance is in taming and pacification. And then the power of enthusiasm is complete pacification and one point tenderness of mind. And, and uh, enthusiasm is you apply so much effort to it that it, you become successful in controlling your mind. And then the final with the power of acquaintance. The power of acquaintance is you're already acquainted with samadhi. So when you were talking about, so at this point, do you know that when we're talking about the Buddhist teaching, you can actually experience the Buddhist teaching yourself. And when you experience this, you realize wonders of the mind. So actually, when you're doing meditation, you're exploring the treasures inside of you. You are exploring your treasures inside of you. So I can imagine people would say, I'm at home and I'm bored. I have to watch television. I have to listen to the radio. I have to, to, to call someone. I'm bored. How can you be bored? Because you have that treasures in you that you can explore by meditation. You sit at home, you're bored? Why don't you open up your, your, your mind treasures and look into it? Step by step, you find your own treasures, immeasurable treasures, boundless thinking, boundless vistas. You, you, there's no end. There's no end to the rainbow. They say at the end of the rainbow, you, you find a pot of gold. Neck and co, I remember. But <laughs> at the end of the there's no end to the rainbow. So don't say you are bored. You're belittling yourself when you say you're bored at home. Open up the treasures inside you and do it step by step by meditation to find your real mind. Don't get mixed up with Mara though. When you meditate, you say, I want supernatural power. I want to get something. If you meditate with something that you want to get, you get into acquisition. When you get into acquisition, you are not at it. There's nothing to be obtained. Remember the Hat Sutra? Form is no different from emptiness. Emptiness is no different than form. Form is emptiness. Emptiness is form. There's no eye, no ear, no, no, no eye, no ear, no tongue, no body of mind, no object of mind. There's no concept, perception, conception, volitions, and consciousness because there's nothing to be obtained. When there is nothing to be obtained, that's the treasure. When, there's, when you don't attach anything, that's treasure. When you attach to things, it's attachment. So don't call your friend that you are bored at home. 
Don't say you turn on the TV because you're bored. You have a lot of hours in you at home. Why don't you explore your own treasures? When you found those treasures, it's all yours. Nobody can take it away. Not thieves, not the government, no tax. Tax free. So, so I finished the nine stages of development. I'm not talking about it anymore. <laughs> so, next time when we mention the three A's to meditation, the first is adjustment. Eh? Adjustment for stand for A. Adjustment to the body, you know. Adjustment to breath, you know. Adjustment to breath is to find an object of attention. Then you know. Adjustment to mind, think about these nine stages.